Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the permanent and imposed actions on the joist B1. Okay, so just to show you where we're at, we're looking at these joists B1. So, the first thing we need to do is find the tributary area for the joist. Now, I mentioned this in the previous, sorry, in the start of the series, that because the joists and the girders are in the same plane, the beams. Uh, this, the tributary area could behave like a one or two way slab, all right? The load path um, is such that because the girders, and the girders and joists are in the same plane, we could have the slab behaving as a one or two way slab. So just to remind you what that sort of looked like, if we take it a typical tributary area for this girder, you, sorry, for this uh, joist over here, the B1 joist, we know that this total length is 12 meters, which means that the distance between each joist is three meters, okay? Which means that the area of slab this joist will carry will be 1.5 meters in that direction and 1.5 meters in that direction. I hope that's obvious. Same thing for this joist here, it's gonna be 1.5, 1.5. Same thing for this thing here, 1.5, 1.5. So each one of those is three. And this edge girder, which we're not worried about now because this is a completely different um, beam, that's gonna carry 1.5 meters of this and 1.5 meters of that slab, okay? So that's just dividing it up. So, we talked about in the previous video this idea of a one-way slab. and it's, So this is a one-way slab and two-way slabs. So we need to establish whether this um, slab is gonna behave as a one-way, so just that and that, which is a lot simpler or whether it's going to divide like this, so that some of the um, slab load will go to this girder and that girder, and in triang triangular uh, load path,